does your endoscope technology support you in the improved detection of polyps, saving time in their characterization, and increasing your confidence in your diagnosis? A really important question. I think that the EVIS X1, together with the 1500 series of endoscopes, has really brought a sea change in, in what you can do with an endoscope. Um, I'm in the business of removing quite large uh, colonic polyps. It helps with lesion characterization. It helps with uh, magnification endoscopy, looking at the structure and surface of the polyp. It helps with performing resection because with the dual focus, now in the extended depth of field, that really allows you to underwater assess things in exactly the same way you can do so in air. And that really adds a huge benefit to our resection capability. So it's helping throughout the whole uh, thing from standard diagnostic endoscopy right up to complex resection. What technology features of the EVIS X1 are outstanding to you and make your procedure more efficient? I already went there. So extended depth of field is the standout feature, I think. Um, it's really something game-changing for those of us performing therapy. But there are other features, of course, the RDI uh, mode for characterization of bleeding source. That's a really important tool to help uh, people who maybe have less experience, I think, uh, at localizing bleeding sources to, to, to treat patients who are often in life-threatening situations. What do you expect from AI and colonoscopy in terms of increasing the ADR? I think you're asking me what is the incremental benefit of artificial intelligence in, in our practice, in anyone's practice? And the answer to that question is significant, I think. Uh, there's lots of studies that show that it's improving uh, the number of polyps detected and difficult to detect polyps like very small polyps. Um, and I think that that is what we expect as, as doctors, that we are not ourselves not looking, but that the technology is helping us see things that are difficult to see or easy to miss. How are your impressions of the detection of Olympus KID system? In artificial intelligence, and I really think that uh, one of the great things about the Olympus system is that you can change the sensitivity of it. So you can have low or high sensitivity. You can have two modes. You can have the mode where there's a box on the screen, or you can have the mode where um, it's off to the side. And I think those two features are critical in terms of getting endoscopists to want to use the system. Other aspects of the system where you don't always have a box on the screen, but you can have a kind of your little friend off to the side picking up the lesions. That's, that's also a very nice feature of the system and the way it works. Detection can be improved by the use of distal attachments, such as distal caps or our unique product endocuff vision. Where do you see the advantages of using either a distal cap or endocuff? What would you recommend your fellow endoscopist? We're talking about the benefit of using a distal tip attachment. I think it's very nice to compare that with AI and see where they can both fit in. Um, artificial intelligence lets you pick up small lesions, but of course, if you can't see them, as in the endoscope never sees them because they're behind a fold, then any AI system, even the best one in the world, will not pick those up. And that's where the distal tip attachment comes in, uh, in, in the cecum maybe, looking under the eyelid equal valve, when you retroflex, looking behind folds, as you pull back, looking behind folds. I am a major fan of the transparent cap. Um, I think that's a great tool um, to do that with. It also lets you do therapy, but endocuff vision is also a great tool, particularly for screening colonoscopy, in terms of letting you see what you might otherwise miss behind the folds. What is your opinion about the combination of AI and endocuff vision that maximizes the view of the colon in terms of increasing the ADR rate? I think that's the future. I think the combination of a distal attachment, be it endocuff, be it a cap, be it any of the other products on the market, and artificial intelligence is the way forward to maximize our detection of small and difficult to detect adenomas. What are the pitfalls and challenges of day-to-day -day endoscopic therapy of CRC? Well, of course, we're, a lot of CRC we're not treating endoscopically. So we are talking about the precursors of, of cancer. We're talking about colon polyps and we're talking about maybe early cancers. The pitfalls of treating them are optical diagnosis using the scope system. I think Olympus products, particularly the new generation of scopes, are really driving forward the ability to see at the microscopic level what, what you otherwise can't see with the older generation systems. I think that the removal technologies, the snares and the, um, the, the knives, I think our main challenge, if you permit me to say, is having tissue retraction, having the tissue up into the space, uh, particularly for ESD, where it can sometimes be very difficult to get the scope into the right place. And so, yeah, that's a significant challenge. Um, I think in the future, hopefully, we'll have devices to help us with that. And uh, there are some challenges, I think, to treating uh, not so much resection, not so much colon cancer, but maybe bleeding. 
where we need devices which can really close uh, fibrotic and difficult to manipulate tissue. And so I would say those are the main challenges for, yeah, for endotherapy at the moment. Guidelines are constantly changing according to research outcomes. The guidelines have changed from hot biopsies to cold snare polypectomy, at least in the lesions up to 10 millimeters. How do you expect the trend for cold snare polypectomy to develop? Yeah, I think it's going to be more and more. Like, I really think that cold snare is the future. Cold snare is safe um, and as effective for small polyps. And there's more and more data coming that it's also uh, effective for larger polyps if you do piecemeal resections. And I think given that a lot of the patients with these polyps are elderly, maybe they're taking blood thinning products, maybe they're high risk for, for bleeding, that those techniques will become more and more important in the future. So I see the place of cold snare as only growing. Do you see advantage of having a hot and cold snare combined? And if so, why? Avoid that. But there is definite benefit to a snare having the ability to do both. Um, because, for example, the Snare Master Plus snare I am using for difficult to uh, capture tissue uh, hot, as well as for its great cold snare performance characteristics. So yeah, definitely. If a snare is, of course, you don't want something that does two things badly. But if you have something that does both things well, then I think absolutely there's a role. Can you tell us what makes Olympus's Snare Master Plus exceptional? I think the Snare Master Plus is uh, the 10 millimeter version I'm talking about. is a great snare for cold um, polypectomy because its shape is probably ideal. I, I think that's the shape that you want—a hex, almost a hexagonal shape, not a, not a, not an oval. Um, it really picks up tissue very well, and it doesn't deform. So a lot of the other products on the market deform. The Snare Master Plus reliably doesn't. I think if you, you know, five or six or seven or eight resections, maybe it starts to deform. But th those for me are the key performance characteristics. And where, in my experience, where some snares will not capture, this snare will. So yeah, these are important positives about that snare. In the context of endoscopic procedures like EMR and ESD, what are the critical characteristics of injection needles that significantly impact the success of these procedures? So an injection needle for EMR and ESD has to be reliable. It has to be able to perform in different angulations of the scope, like when you're completely retrofexed. And it needs to be able to deliver tissue to reliably to the submucosal plane. I think those are the main characteristics of an important characteristics of an injection needle. Given your experience with the Snare Master Plus, what unique features make it an exceptional tool for endoscopic procedures? One of the benefits, I think, over other snares is that you can use the catheter without using the needle uh, to kind of expand the submucosal plane. So for that reason, I like it. It does perform well in retroflexion and in uh, scope manipulation situations. From detection to treatment, Olympus aims to develop solutions and technology advances to support colorectal cancer prevention. Regarding our campaign, Every Adenoma Counts, how much do you agree with this statement and why or why not? Yeah, sure. I agree with every adenoma counts. It's a great slogan. I think you, you guys should do as much as you can to promote that amongst uh, my colleagues. What do you like about Olympus products? So these are the key things. Precision, reliability and a good portfolio of products which we need and they fill the niches we need as doctors.